Guys, we've got more updates in the conference realignment saga. We've got some very interesting numbers to get to. But first, how about this? Mountain West goes viral in attempt to troll the Big 12 and the Pac-12. I don't know if you guys saw this, but yesterday with the, or, or it was Monday, excuse me, the release of the AP poll, you can see the Mountain West. Same as the Big 12, same as the Pac-12. Uh, AP poll, five teams ranked inside the top 44. Of course, the Mountain West, none of those teams are ranked inside the top 25, but they all received some form of vote, so it's a little troll. Uh, I don't know if I would call 1.3K likes viral. I would I would not, um, but they're saying they, go, they went viral, so a little funny jab there. Again, none of those teams are ranked, and I would be. The only team I could see maybe getting ranked towards the end of the year is Boise State. Everyone, every other one of those teams has major flaws, in my opinion. We've also got this. Virginia should take the opportunity to move to the Big Ten if presented, and I absolutely agree with this. You know, we talked about the grant of rights deal, the hurdles that those ACC teams will face. They need to get eight teams in agreement uh, to be able to dissolve that conference. If it gets that bad, that would include a 20-team Big Ten, a 20-team SEC, and you'd see many of those teams in the ACC want to leave. I think the thing that's really going to entice some of these ACC teams to at least get this Grand of Rights deal renegotiated will be the uh, ru rumored TV contract the Big Ten has with Fox, NBC, and CBS. What are those official numbers? When that comes out, you're going to get a lot of ACC programs that get real jealous. And you're going to see them demand a renegotiation or maybe even try and get the eight members to be able to leave the actual conference and get rid of that grant of rights deal. Virginia is definitely a team. To me, Virginia, if you tell me right now, this is what I always say. If you tell me in 2025, or let's just say 2027, in 2027, Virginia is in a different conference and you ask me which conference they're in, I will say 99% chance they're in the Big Ten. If Virginia moves, it's, to me, the only option that makes sense for Virginia, their academics, their program, is the Big Ten. So that's where I think Virginia would go. A lot of questions about Virginia of all schools moving. How big would the Big Ten be at that point? Would we be talking about 24 team conferences? Would be would, would we we still be talking about 20 team conferences? The thing is, I think if it's 20 team conferences, it's gonna be Notre Dame, Stanford, Oregon, and Washington because there's rumors from ESPN people of a West Wing. So uh, it would probably have to be a 24 team Big Ten conference. But Virginia certainly their one fit. If they leave the ACC or if something happens that involves the ACC teams wanting to get out of that, that horrible grant of rights deal, maybe they're not able to renegotiate. You know, I'm just speculating potentially that we could see Virginia be a team that does move to the Big Ten. That seems like the only uh, realistic option for Virginia on where they go. So now we've got some numbers, some more numbers that have been released regarding conference realignment. And I do have a few things I wanted to talk about. Let me make sure I get this. So this is college football's uh, highly concentrated fan bases. Uh, and you can see college football has an incredibly con concentrated fan base at the top of the sport. Half of the overall fans cheer for the top 16 teams and 75% of the fans cheer for the top 35. College football has a very long tail of small fan bases in the bottom 10%. And you can see 50% of fans cheer for one of the top 16 teams. I got to say that really doesn't surprise me. Um, just the way college football is set up, 16 teams, 50%, it's a big number. You'd like it to be spread out more. But it's not all that surprising. 75% cheer for the top 35 teams. So you can see, you know, there's a there's an extreme uh, low amount of really popular college football teams and then a bunch of smaller teams. That's what this graph is representing. And then it says the top 16 teams account for 50% of all college fo football fans. Um, and when it comes to this, these numbers that they got, 
This was apparently a 2019 New York Times study coupled with a 538 study and something from 2011. And yeah, the the or some of these numbers just I don't want to say they don't add up. Like I certainly think Ohio State has the biggest fan base, Notre Dame second. You know, it makes sense. I would say Michigan probably third, honestly. But the major issue here is Syracuse. So according to this study, Syracuse has a bigger fan base than both Auburn and Tennessee. Um, that is in, in college football. Now, obviously, they're using their uh, the the study is somehow flawed to where it's a very loose terminology of the word fan. Because let's be real, not all fans are created equal. There are some fans of Michigan that watch like one game a year and they consider themselves fans. And then there's other fans of Michigan that are talking about them every single day, you know, looking at their recruiting, following all that, like every other fan base, right? So I think the major flaw into this study is... Syracuse has the New York market. There's a lot of people that live there. I guess they technically consider themselves Syracuse fans. Syracuse bigger than Auburn, um, and then bigger than Knox. I mean, I don't. I I just don't. the The way this study is done, there's definitely something that's flawed in it. If you're telling me Syracuse has a bigger fan base than Auburn and Tennessee in football, you're using the terminology of the word fan very loosely. In my opinion, again, I would say Michigan probably has the third biggest fan base. At least there was a study done earlier this year. I believe it was Ohio State, Notre Dame, Michigan, then maybe Texas, then Penn State. Alabama, you know, people always think Alabama's the best. They're the biggest. They're not. They're top 10, but they're not number one. And then how about Oregon? Uh, Another thing that, like, if Oregon actually had that big of a fan base, I think they would... 100% be more talked about joining the Big Ten. There's been reports that the Big Ten wants Washington over Oregon, and Washington's not even on this graph, and Oregon is like ranked as the seventh biggest fan base in college football. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh biggest in front of Alabama. So, you know, it's one of those things where you really got to start wondering with these overall studies that they do and where they're really getting these numbers. Conference fan base, total college football fans per school. Uh, This is probably a pretty accurate representation with the SEC being number one. The Big Ten has overall, it's more top heavy. It has bigger fan bases overall, but the SEC has a bunch of where they you know, really care about college football, that's the Auburns, that's the Tennessees. You've still got Georgia, you've got Alabama, you've got Florida. They're a lot more deeper in terms of how big their fan bases are, even though the Big Ten probably has the three, Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan, who are just insanely possible, who are insanely popular outside of that. And then the ACC, including Notre Dame, which I don't know why, this is a college football study, I don't know why they're including Notre Dame in this. Notre Dame is not part of the ACC in college football. They are in other sports, but not college football. And then the Pac-12. So I don't know if this has to be before USC and UCLA left the Pac-12 for the Pac-12 to have that much, you would think. Um, And then the Big 12, that would probably be after, well, it would definitely be after the loss of Texas and Oklahoma And then there you can see, it looks like the Mountain West is above the American. Or I don't know, maybe that is factored in. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's factored in. Like the Big 12 getting those teams from the American. I'm guessing it probably is factored in because the American is really low. Uh, So yeah, I'm guessing it is uh, in my opinion. And you can see, looks like the MAC has the lowest fan base out of any conference uh, there and then it says realignment evolution of the Big 12 fan base. Turmoil in Big 12 membership has now stabilized in the conference. However, the conference's overall fan base has seen a 58% decline during the two rounds of conference realignment, even when accounting for new members. And of course, this is the problem with the Big 12's new realignment you're losing two blue bloods and you're replacing them. With, I mean, it's not like UCF, Houston, you know, Cincinnati, BYU are bad teams, but they're not even close to the fan bases that Oklahoma and Texas have. 
I'm not saying the study is completely accurate, but I understand. I mean, Big 12 fans have to realize, if you don't have a blue blood, your conference is going to lose a significant amount of value. It just is. I mean, what is the most powerful team right now in the Big 12 once uh, Oklahoma and Texas leave? I mean, you can say there's a ton of parity, and, and there is for sure, but just this is, you know, very interesting. You see A&M leaving back in 2010, Nebraska, Colorado, Missouri, uh, and then in 2020, the two teams that leave and the four teams that join, they lose value again. Uh, you know, so that doesn't surprise me at all personally, and these numbers do reflect that the, I still think right now, with the Pac-12 losses of, and the numbers actually do say this, we've seen studies done, um, with the Pac-12 losing USC and UCLA, I think the Big 12 is worth more in its current state than the Pac-10 is right now in its current state with 10 teams, even with Washington and, and Oregon, because the at least the Big 12 has a bunch of parity and it has a bunch of solid college football teams and a really good basketball side of things, you know, that's bringing in, uh, I like a team like Kansas with the basketball, uh, then the Pac-12, which is just a disaster in basketball, and you're losing USC and UCLA in football. So I would say the Big 12 is still uh, in front of it in that terms, but like the Big 12, if you don't have a super team, it's very hard to build a conference that is going to generate a significant TV deal. That's why the ACC is still ahead because they've got Clemson, Miami, Florida State. They're always going to be ahead um, if you have those teams compared to what the Big 12 currently has with the loss of Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, pro so this is very interesting and it does make sense when you think about it. Programs with the nation's leading rusher by year and like, none of these teams outside of Alabama and Wisconsin, I guess Oklahoma State, it's a bunch of just obscure teams. Uh, you know, San Diego State, Central Michigan, Iowa State, that had to have been Brace Hall. Uh, but you can see just, you know, it, the top rusher in college football normally doesn't equal massive success. It's very interesting looking at this. And then even going back into the early 2000s, um, that as well. I just thought that was really interesting. But, oh, who was that? Was that eight? No. I'm trying to think. 2013, Antonio Williams. Is that who it was for Boston College? I believe that. I think I got that name right. Um, and then this was just something that I talked about yesterday that I wanted to go over. Jesus, I have a lot of photos. Um, this was the top 50 college football stadiums by capacity. So I got this right. And Ohio State is number three now because they removed seating. So Michigan's number one. These are the biggest stadiums. Michigan, then Penn State, then Ohio State. A&M is number four. Tennessee, they, they're going through a renovation. Or they might have already just went through it. They have a stadium renovation. Alabama at six. LSU. Texas, they recently had a renovation. The Coliseum, USC, they got an amazing renovation. And how about Georgia also? So all these teams are doing renovations. Nebraska at number 11. The Rose Bowl at number 12. And then I thought it was funny. U UMass at number 27. UAB at 23. UAB has a higher stadium capacity than Iowa. And Pittsburgh. Well, Pittsburgh plays at Heinz Field. So I don't, and Miami plays at, uh, what is it, Sun Life? I don't think it's called Sun Life anymore. Oh, Hard Rock. Hard Rock Stadium. That's what it's called. I'm glad I, I remembered that. Uh, but guys, those were just a few things, a few different data points to look at. And guys, overall, this data offers the representation of the problems with not having a major powerhouse program. That's the current problems for the Big 12. That's also the current problems for the Pac-12, or now the Pac-10, whatever you want to call them, when you don't have a powerhouse university like a mega university. I would say the mega university is Ohio State. I, I guess they're saying in this study, this I, I just can't understand Oregon having the seventh biggest fan base in college football. Yeah, I don't know what to make of this study. I think it's a very loose terminology of the word fan. Um, there has to be a greater threshold than just 
I, I don't know how they got the numbers, honestly. I would have to look into it. Uh, but either way, that's what the study is. And guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.